So welcome back to Creative Juices. Today we have Bob Girardi with me and I've been uh, uh, following him for over 10 years now. We met at in Cincinnati at an international art show that we both made it into by the skin of our teeth. No, <laughs> but uh, it's a it's a great. It always feels that way. Like, I can't believe it. I can't believe I got in there. Yeah. Every show you're like, oh, yeah, until that one time that you really don't get in, you're like, wait a minute, why not? <laughs> it's funny you say that. It started off, you know, as, as a young artist, like, I can't believe they got me in there. This is unbelievable. And then, you know, you submit to some magazines like they don't they don't know what they're doing, do they over there? <laughs> no, I have not reached that level of cockiness and hope I never get there. Right. No, that's so funny. So uh, in fact, I'm, I'm honored that you asked me to be on the show because I know you've done uh, interviewed some really big name artists. So to be included um, is really, um, it's really an honor. So thank you. Well, you, this last year I've been watching you and, and you're in, you know, 423 magazines. And uh, <laughs> I just wanted to catch you before you forgot my single letter name. So yeah, sure. <laughs> As a kid, I was always fascinated with with art. I'd see something, it's like, wow, how did that person do that? That's just that's just so beyond me. What 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 happened there? How to try and reverse engineer it in my head, and then I try and draw it. And uh, I was getting more and more successful as a kid, and then that gained more and more momentum. But most of the things I was uh, inspired by were in magazines or or uh, movie posters or when I was a kid at Atari 2600 the cover art for, for those games just blew me away so I went to school to be an illustrator and graduated and just as I was graduating the illustration industry went through a big change where they were going and buying uh, from stock houses instead of getting original art from illustrators. So I was like, oh man, what am I going to do now? After um, a serious panic attack, panic attack and many uh, sleepless nights, I turned to, uh, to the fine arts and uh, galleries and have just been, you know, one foot in front of the other and the starving artist days and oh my goodness, what am I going to make this work? And then just you know, just keep going, just keep going. I mean, it's uh, it's what I'm born to do. So there really was no backup plan. So. I've always been fascinated with the um, the wetlands and, and marshes. And there's this kind of, you're invited, but you're not supposed to be there. So there's almost like an emotional tension whenever I'm around marshes. And this time I got to actually kayak into them with, with my friend. And I was so excited. I was showing them all the, uh, the footage I got and all the reference material. I work from photos um, for reference almost exclusively. As you can see, they're pretty tight. So I am re rely on the, on the photos. And uh, so I was showing him and I was getting all jazzed up about it. And he says, hey, why don't you just uh, do a show out of here? I was like, OK. So we're uh, we're in the process of working that out while I create the work and create the videos for the show, as well as social media to, to promote it. So that's really exciting. I'm super, super pumped about that. Born and raised on uh, acrylics. It's all my uh, high school had. So I got used to painting in acrylics when I was in art school at Syracuse. They had something called uh, media arts and they wanted to introduce artists to all different mediums. People are always surprised when I say acrylic. Oh, your paintings, they look like oil paints because I like a muted palette. And a lot of people who use acrylics have very, uh, you know, light, bright and tight style. And I'm kind of tight, but not light and bright. It's almost a sadness to them, like this this persistence, this perseverance where no one really goes out into these marshes and there's a, there's a loneliness to them. And in that loneliness, I think there's a lot of beauty that can be found when you, you look be behind the, uh, the nooks and crannies and it, it forces you to stop and shut out the noise and you almost have no choice to kind of look inwards. It's uh, interesting. I did a two commissions of ocean scenes. And when they asked me to do them, I'm like, oh, man, don't do this to me. I don't know how to paint an ocean. I've never painted an ocean before. 
I did them. They were extremely difficult. Finished them and I was super excited. I have to give a shout out to Adam Hall. I don't know if you're familiar with his work, a young artist, brilliant artist who does these oceanscapes. And if it wasn't for studying his work and talking with him, I probably wouldn't have been able to get to where I got to. So thank you, Adam. They came out so well and they were so well received that like a dummy, I'm like, well, let me just do one for myself. And I do it four by six feet. You know, it's like... (laughs) <laughs> brand new to the subject matter yeah. had two major panic attacks during the last two ocean scenes so why don't i do it four by six feet yeah. so um you know that that was uh, i literally felt like i was drowning in the ocean but i really like that piece it was um i think it has that perfect emotional tension i spoke of earlier uh between beauty and sadness so it leans a little bit more towards towards the loneliness because you you can't tell if the house is abandoned or not but you can tell it's got story and there's things that have happened there families were raised there there's a a tree stump in the front which also adds to that there was life there and it was beautiful but now there's just a stump left so there's a lot of different things going on there another one of my favorite paintings is is a, a rusted air conditioning unit um, in a deserted building as it's being covered with a fresh coat of snow. And there was that, that kind of forgotten about place, that everyday scene. Oh, it's just a rusted air conditioner. But the newness of the snow in, in contrast with, with the, the rust on the air conditioner and, and, and the plywood over, over a, a cinder block a window that's framed out with cinder block. There was, there was something so beautiful about that. And sure enough, I pulled my car over and I went into that spot and I named the piece even here in winter, meaning like even here in this sort of dungy or dingy corner, if that's the way you want to see it, there's something beautiful here. And the, the contrast between the newness and a fresh start over that rusted air conditioning next to the uh, cinder blocks. Um, I, I, I just love that that tension, that emotional tension. I also enjoyed your, it was, they were ravens, right? Did a series? Yeah. What put yeah. that on? I, I departed a bit from, um, from what I normally do is, Pretty tight background, photo reference. I mean, yes, I use photo reference for, for, the, um, for the ravens and the crows, but a lot of texture, a lot of, um, you know, a focus on just one part of it and then the rest of it fading off. So that was a nice departure from what I usually uh, do as far as technique wise. But even emotionally, I, I was kind of into them for the, for the same reason. There's this there's this beauty and darkness about them where there's that, that push and pull and it creating that, um, you know, emotional tension in them too. That series was called the black series and started off with black number one, all the way into the thirties. And they're all, I think I've only got like three left and they, they were just so well received. That was exciting. I'm going to get back into that sooner or later too. I might do something called the white series because I found some, uh, imagery of, um, white crows which i've never seen before i'm like wow that's cool how cool would that be to have a series the black series and the white series so uh keep your eye out out for that that's well great. bob I, uh, I i really think you and i could talk forever uh and probably yeah thank you so much for taking the time uh to record this course. or this interview with me and uh i will continue stalking you on facebook excellent same here thanks jay i really appreciate it